So um, the difference between then, I mean, corporate is profit driven or you want one wants to set up their own company and, and create products and so on. So it's people who are creative, whereas working at a university, especially teaching at a university, it's about training the mind. One of the questions that came um, from the subscribers um, was, the question reads as follows. What does it take for you working in an academic space as opposed to the corporate space? I guess this person was just like, maybe they wanted to say like, uh, why did you choose the space and how does it differ from the corporate space? But uh, I don't know how do you'd answer this because you have never been in corporate, but, but maybe um, you can give this person their answer? Um, yes, I've never worked in corporate. Uh, again, uh, looking at these things historically, is that at the time that people of my generation went to school, there were very limited options about going into the corporate sector, especially if you're a black person. Um, the whole edifice of apartheid it, it, it was that black people would do manual work or be civil servants, be clerks and so on. Uh, if you talk about corporate, you probably at the time that I was an undergraduate uh, would be people who were thinking about doing accounting. Okay? Then there was a possibility that they could work, work in the corporate sector. I would say that even people were doing law at the time. Now you have got uh, um, law graduates working in the corporate sector. But then people who are doing law would uh, be lawyers defending in court, or they would be prosecutors, okay? Um, very few of them. Uh, I mean, there was no discussion about, I'll go be a legal advisor at a, uh, at a discovery or something like that. Uh, so fast forward now, there are, maybe one can describe this as, there are many options in terms of careers that people can pursue. And working in the corporate sector is one of them. Uh, now, as I said, I've never worked in the corporate sector. Um, but from what one reads, what, what is the aim of companies? It, it's to, it's, it's profit driven. I hope that I won't be attacked for that. I mean, nobody will set a, uh, a company to make losses. They want to, they want to make money, okay? Um, so, and also really, I think, there, 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 there's also the space of entrepreneurs, uh, people who create new products and <clears throat> set up companies around that. Um, I, I admire those people because, first of all, you have to be creative. Right? You have to think of something that is not there in the market. And then you also have to be convinced that uh, there will be customers for it. And then, of course, there's a process of setting all of that up. I don't think I would be, I would be able to do that. So um, the difference between then, I mean, corporate, it's profit driven, or you want, one wants to set up their own company and, and create products and so on. So it's people who are creative. Whereas working at a university, especially teaching at a university, it's about training the mind. Um, so we train people, I'm not saying that we train people to be innovative or creative, but it's more about um, thinking about beyond that which is known. Um, and whether that translates into products is not something that is 
at the back of an academic's mind. They are looking for answers to questions that were maybe one says that there could be a better way of doing something or there is no answer at this stage to this question. Can I find, can I be the first one to find an answer? Yeah. Um, you know, there is this, also this argument that I hear a lot and I've also had this with some of my peers who we did honors together. Um, the question about money. It's always about money, especially with a lot of people. So there is this um, perceived um, conception that um, academia doesn't have money, and then you have a lot of students who then aspire to be in corporate um, because, you know, people, I guess, they are money-driven and stuff like that. Um, what would you say about something like that or to someone who has those kind of views? Yeah, I mean, is there something fascinating about about human beings uh, that although I mean we're human beings but our interests differ in ways that we cannot we, ca we cannot explain um, it's difficult to say what drives people to do certain things okay and it's, I don't think it's possible to say why, why one would uh, um, prefer to live in a city as opposed to live out in the countryside. There are people who just can't stand living in the city. Uh, and vice versa, there are people who say that, oh, I would die if I were to live in the countryside. So it's, it's, it, it would be very difficult, very difficult then to say uh, why people make certain choices. Um, I mean, even in the choice of food, uh, somebody might like chips and somebody else likes something else. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, of course, we all need money because the things that we need to, should I say to survive or to, or even maybe to live, should I say a comfortable life? I don't know, I don't have an elegant way to put it. Uh, but there's very little that you can do without money. But then the question becomes, how much money do, does one need, okay? If maybe you earn, 50,000 rand a month, is that enough? Somebody will say, oh, that is too much. And somebody will say, no, I can't even afford to rent a house, da, da, and so on. So, um, I think, I mean, the pursuit of money is first of all, just about being able to live. And, and secondly, it's your lifestyle. Our lifestyles are different. And, and thirdly, maybe there is, there is joy and excitement in the same way that I said um, an academic would really feel a sense of satisfaction in finding answers to questions. Um, there are people who find satisfaction in accumulating a lot of money that uh, it's, it's open-ended. Um, so yeah, I mean, um, the choices that people make, uh, they want to work, work in the corporate because it provides them with the opportunity to earn money and, and, and that would enable them to, to enjoy a certain lifestyle. That, that's, that's something that, uh, I mean, one cannot, it's, it's, it's there. And at the same time, you are right that salaries in, in academia, or maybe even just teaching. It's not only at universities. It's, it's one could say that teachers are underpaid. Uh, the teaching profession is maybe not attractive to quite a number of people because of the salary levels. And then as a society, maybe we should think about that that education is very important to train people. So 
if the wage structure and remuneration is such that it is not effective, then that has implications to us as a society, right? that people maybe are not motivated because they feel undervalued. So this whole thing about remuneration and so on, um, it's, it's for me a key question in social sciences, and I'm not a social scientist, um, in terms of motivating people and, and attracting them to certain professions. Uh, when I was still staying at rest, because you know at rest they used to pay us, especially when we were doing first year, uh, you have a roommate, I used to have a roommate from Mauritius, and it was during that time when there used to be these teacher strikes. I think there was this huge, uh, there was a time where there was like a frequency of uh, teachers going on strike. And he was so surprised, actually. He was like, your teachers in South Africa go on strike. And I was like, why do you say that? It was like in Mauritius, teachers are like very revered. It's the most... Um, respected career they wouldn't even dare to go on strike i mean the, the president wouldn't even allow it because of that's the foundation of the nation and for development and everything and it made sense to me but here i, I think it's the other way around you know <laughs> funny enough yeah i mean that 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 that, that that's true i mean uh, what, what what is true <laughs> uh the, i mean there are other professions as well in fact uh, if if you are following the news <laughs> elsewhere Right now, uh, health workers in the UK, doctors, specialists, nurses, and so on, are on strike, on and off, around issues of salary. Okay? And, 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 and it has been asked that, how can people who are essential uh, in terms of, I mean, the health of of, of society, of the community. What if, what if an elderly person has a stroke while they are on strike? What if um, um, yeah. um, female is in labor and, and, and the ambulance cannot carry them to hospital? Um, so again, those are complex questions in, uh, in society. Uh, for me, one of them is what drives people to take actions that they would not normally take or we don't expect them almost like as a last resort uh, is it a failure to communicate is it a failure yeah. to see um, the needs of the other it's a um, uh, is there no way of people finding a compromise uh, so that you don't... Because, again, I mean, going on strike is, is almost like a, a last resort. Okay? There are certain things that have taken place before people resort to going on strike. True. Mm. Yeah, no, um, it's quite sad. The other question that came through was how rewarding is the career in academia on average, especially for someone doing mathematics? Um, yeah. Reward is, uh, it comes in different forms. Uh, we, we, we've just talked now I think, with the previous question about finances, which is a financial reward. And, and the answer is not, it is not that, <laughs> it is not that financially rewarding. I mean, you are not going to be... <laughs> The salaries, okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> but for me, I mean, I can only talk about myself. Um, there are two aspects that I find very rewarding about working in academia. One is something that I've kind of repeated uh, more than once. Uh, and it's this satisfaction of uh, pushing back the frontiers of knowledge, uh, where there will be that time, especially in mathematics, where you have proved a theorem, you have established something, where you say, at this moment, when you finish it, 
You say at this moment, I'm the only person in the world who knows this fact about whatever. And it's such, it's such a certain, and, and, and you say I'm responsible for adding a little bit of knowledge to what is already known. I found that so fulfilling. It's, it's like you can take a walk and say, yeah. Okay. And then the other one, I mean, is the teaching aspect. Is the teaching aspect. They're, 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 it's so fulfilling to see somebody that you have taught uh, being successful in what they do. Uh, I mean, somebody that I come across somebody that I taught as an undergraduate or at honors level uh, saying that I finished my PhD. You have no idea how fulfilling that is. Okay. Um, and, and, and it's very, it's very difficult to, for somebody maybe who has not been in that position, it's very difficult for me to describe how fulfilling that is. I see, I see, I see. No, you, you, you're really right. You know, like when you, I, I guess it's a thing of, like you said earlier on, that as people are not the same. Some people might not be fulfilled by that. But I remember the reason why I chose to be in academia. One time when I was in honors, you know, you then given a tutorial class to tutor. Then they assign your class, then you go and tutor. And I remember... Sometime I would even like it would be like five o'clock and I'll be like, hey, I didn't eat, <laughs> but I'll just be so like there's this thing I don't, I can't explain it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But just me going there, seeing the students, helping them, and coming back like for me that was the day. Like everything didn't matter. Like it was just so fulfilling. So uh, you know that feeling. I think you are right that you can't explain it to someone who is not within it or who haven't felt it uh, like i guess we are fulfilled by different things you know 